but I keep forgetting to find it. I um, almost did not wake up for this. And by almost, I mean quite literally, I was uh, asleep 20 minutes ago, and uh, somehow I woke up, and uh, I'm here now, but that's okay. We are here for our technically lesson one, but technically we did the Korean alphabet, so basically it's our lesson two, but it's lesson one. I'm not going to get into specifics. That was going on. I don't even know what the hell that was. It's fine. Everything's fine. Anyway. Let's... Everything is actually pulled up correctly, so I'm glad. We are going to go back over what we went over last Tuesday, which is just the alphabet, which I have that pulled up. I think they should make a lesson specifically yeah, they have like a reference thing. I think I might just I might pull that up. Yeah, so they just go over every all of the, the characters. So which we also have up here. Which is like technically out of order, but I'll put uh we'll figure out how to put it in order. We originally learned the consonants, the regular consonants, which is the K, N, D, the R slash L, which is just weird for English speakers, M, B, S, J, and H. And then here are the regular vowels. I'm shaming off for this And we have the regular vowels, which is like the E, A, O, I, I, and O. M. And then it's like a double consonant kind of thing. Really, which is a weird dot, but just kind of like you put extra emphasis on certain parts of the world word, basically. And then we have the like more complex vowels, which you know, coming from English speaking as an English speaker first, you're sitting here, what do you mean complex? vowels like we just say a e what are our vowels a e i o u yeah there are no other vowels but they like they can like put their vowels together and make more complex ones which is what this is so yeah yo you yo a e we wo we wa we ye ye we we which they like are spelled slightly differently, like these two in particular. They're spelled differently, but they almost sound they sound exactly the same. So I don't know the differences. And that was lesson zero, which I added this later. The lesson zero thing. All right, are we caught up? <laughs> and it was uh, up to everyone else to memorize this over the last week. And so now we're gonna go jump into the regular one. So yeah, we can see everything on this side. Where they go over these and again like this circle is either silent if it's in the first constant or it's an ng if it's at the end and depending on how your vowel is up um, if it's vertical or horizontal depends on how you're going to write your words and then obviously we have some of the complex ones where kind of a little bit different. Generally, whenever I have a complex word like this, it's always underneath. Okay. So I went over it. I'll say I went over it. I understand kind of the whole, whole point. So lesson one through eight is where we start actually learning grammar, phrases, and words that you can apply to daily conversations. We'll start They'll start by introducing us basic sentences structure. will lead to making our own sentences using proper conjunctuation, conjunctuation techniques. You'll also learn about all the irregulars in Korean grammar and how to use them in sentences. These first, late, uh, these first eight lessons are hard, but they will be strong foundation for your future studies. 
I'm one of those people where I want to know the most information from the get-go. I want to have a good foundation. I know some people, they like learning where like, they want to learn phrases like conversationally. Like they don't really care about conjunctuation. They don't really care about making their sentences. Like they just kind of like want to learn conversation and like that's completely fine. I, my brain doesn't exactly work that way, which is why I like this, um, this language learning structure. And for lesson one, it is basic Korean sentences. I already kind of peeked. Um, I only peeked so I could get the name of it, okay? That's all I did. That's all I looked at. Let's see. Actually, I think you just heard... I wonder if I can just mute Discord. Who is even Discord with me? Let me. I'm gonna ignore that. Let's hop right into it. So I just realized it's kind of like weird. I can adjust this. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna adjust a little bit. That way I can see like the, the chat. And you're sitting there like I don't see any difference, and that's okay. Alrighty. And again, what I really like is like you can like I have a couple of videos. Um, which we might actually we might check out those at the end. I think that would be a good use of our time. So we're gonna jump right into vocabulary. The vocabulary is separated into nouns, verbs, and adjectives and adverbs for purpose of simplicity. Click on the English word to see information and examples of what of that word in use. You probably won't be able to understand the grammar within the sentences at this point, but it's good to see as you progress through your learning. And I already have a PDF, which I'm tempted. I'm tempted to download. Um, and you can try finding these words in a word search, which I love word searches. I don't know if you like word searches, but I might, I might do that one. That sounds like fun. Let's see. So... There's different ways that you can like learn all these words. I remember I used to what I used to do is I would like write them down in uh, Hansa, and then I would just write them down and I write like I'd have a whole list. I have my my original folder file thing over there, um, which is like I literally just I would just write it write it over and over and over and over again until like I like got ingrained in my memory um but we'll we'll just skip that for now because I don't think we need to, <laughs> we really need to know that so it looks like if you click on it oh see oh that was wrong oh you click on this name oh, okay 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 we can close it okay so I think let's go through all of it yeah let's just go through all of the words um i'm not really going to like break them up versus noun and all that stuff i'm just kind of gonna go down the list so the first word that we're gonna learn is hanza oh sorry hanguk which we're going to hanguk hanguk which obviously i have an accent but you know i'm allowed to have an accent <laughs> I'm learning to. Um, let's see. Han book. So I basically just write it out on my own, and then you can have like your little Korea like that. There you go. And the next one we're going to learn is doshi. Doshi city. Doshi. Which I again I'm just going to write out like this. Dorsi. That's city. 
Next word that we're learning is item, which is name. Eden. Eden. And again, that like weird RL. Uh, the weird one that is very hard to pronounce and write. I hate, I honestly hate how this word, like how I write this, like I hate writing this word. Eden. Because there's just so many lines. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, it's okay. That's name. The next word we're going to learn is jo, which jo can mean lots of things, which you can see that over here. Um, jo can mean I slash me in a formal sense. When they say formal, there's formalities in Korean speaking where like you're very formal to your elders or people older than you or teachers or someone who's in a position of power. You're very respectful. There's a very respectful way of speaking and then there's um a more less there's a less formal there's an informal way of speaking where you would use the word na when you're referring to yourself so if i was speaking to like i guess like um, a teacher like a son sang -nim, i would literally say i would for i would be very formal i would say cho when i'm referring to myself Whereas if I'm talking to a friend who's the same age as me or younger, I would say na when I'm referring to myself. Like, oh, I want to go do this thing. I would use na. Whereas if I was telling a teacher I wanted to go do this thing or someone in a position of power that you need to more, be more formal to, you would say so. I'm getting very off track. Let me get back on track. Um, so I'm going to actually put these, I think. No, I think I'll just put it over here. Bless you. The boyfriend sneezed. So this is I slash me formal. I'm actually just going to write F. I think that'll be fine. We know what F means. At least I know what F means. And then we're going to put na, which is I slash me informal. I'm gonna put I at if. And what's next is. Oh, wait, I guess I should probably actually play the. Cho. Cho? Nah. Nah. There we go. And next word that we're learning is namza, which is uh, man. Namza. Namza. Which. I wonder if I can fit that right here. Probably. Nam. Ah. I like adjusted this. Nam. That end sucks. You know what? I'm just going to erase that. I'm going to erase it. We'll restart. Okay. Let's try again. We got Nam. Keep. Oh my goodness. I keep adjusting it on accident. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind. Nam da. Just man. And then we have yota, which is woman. Which I'll play that one. Yota. And then we're gonna write it. Ta. And again, my handwriting is very proper i would say um a lot of people don't write like this properly um if you can understand what you're writing i call that a win i think you're doing well it's all about what you can do like what you can see what you you can make sense of it's all for you next word we're learning is e which is this e e very easy, very simple. Love it. This. The next word is ku, which is that. I feel like I said it wrong. Ku. Ku. Well, they'll have it secondly. Ku. Ku. Yeah. Ku. And that's that. So, I honestly don't completely understand 
what is between ku and jo is um what if this will be an example so ku is an example of a ah kwon hyeongsa i don't know what that means kwon hyeongsa um you would use it to like say like oh kusaram that person or kukot that thing um it's basically like you're referring to something and then jo is also a, another example of a kwon hyeongsa um so it's referring to something that's like super far away it's not in in reach so i guess i don't understand how you can have that hospital as far oh that school's a historic building who is that person i guess So it's placed before nouns that are far away, not within reach. For example, you want to refer to a person across the street. I don't understand the distinction. I don't know when it doesn't really specify. I guess like this is a clue. It sounds like it's more like when you're addressing something or someone. Like, ah, this table or this whiteboard like that whiteboard um like it's kind of like more general like okay like oh this school that that person whereas like what you want like oh that specific person over there that i can't touch that kind of seems where you would use jo over ku that's just my understanding of it obviously i could be wrong this is why we're learning together so let's put jo um Again, things can mean different things. Same thing in English. It's normal. So, there's a lot of things. Okay, after jo, we, we learned kot, which is thing. Kot. Kot. Which you're like, why is it pronounced like that when it ends in S? Why does it do that? I have no good answer for you. I just know that that is a when something ends with a uh, a consonant that isn't like ng. It usually just sounds like a d or a k or something. It doesn't actually sound like the actual uh, value of the consonant. Let's write that down. Where the heck were we? Cool. Okay. But if you were to like put this in a sentence, I'll show you. You can't hear the sentences. Um, let's say like when you put it in a sentence like this, it would go from cult. So this says, uh, e kosun. Once you have like, if it has like this, like the O in the first spot, which makes it silent is this consonant sound actually transfers over, which I'm sure they're going to go over. So it would say, U kos, uh, kosun moya, moya, mo, moya. What is that thing? Mo. Mo is what? Which again, I'm sure they're going to go over this. Anyway, let's move on. So that's, that's a thing, kot thing. Ah, I don't know how I messed up that. We're going to ignore it. We're going to ignore it. Okay. Why do I keep missing? Okay. I keep, I'm just going to, whatever. So thing, and then I'm not even going to write these down, but they like go over like this thing, that thing, that thing, which I think the difference, it looks like this gets shortened to kuko, kuko. Instead of kuko? Ku god. Got. Yeah. Shoko? Yeah. Just 
I'm not going to write this down because I'm like, okay, this, not, this seems like repeat to me because like we know what, we can add these together. There you go. Welcome. So you can add things together. What a great time. Um, so we're going to go Yuzo, share, which this is my favorite thing ever. This is the first thing I noticed on like the first, when I first did this was Yuzo is chair and Uisa is doctor. And I'm like, I wonder how many kids call doctors chairs. <laughs> I know, Tara. Uza. Uza. E. I say it wrong. U. I didn't even know I was saying it wrong. Uza. U. That's embarrassing. It's fine. I've been saying it wrong forever. It'll be okay. I can change now. It'll be fine. Go U. Uza. Chair. And then takta, table, talk. Takta. Yay. I, I wrote that like, oh, so wrongly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewrite that. That was really wrong. My pacing is horrid. I have no idea. Cause like, eventually I'm gonna have to like go over like past lessons and I feel like I'm just doing this there, I'm doing the alphabet very slowly. Okay, so we learned table and chair. We're gonna go to the next page now. Look, my writing's getting smaller. Um, next is um, Sun Seng Nim, Sun Seng Nim, which um, one percent of something. If you ever watch that Korean drama, which is amazing, by the way, it's the only drama, it's the only Korean drama I like. <laughs> um, I learned that. Sonseng, like you know how you say like Sonseng Nim, it's very like that's you can say teacher, but you can like say teach. Imagine how you like call your teacher teach. Hey, what's up, teach? You can just say Sonseng. Um, I don't recommend doing that to your teacher. Don't do it. But it's there. Let me write it. Son. Nim. Okay. And that is teacher. So I guess I'm sort of a son saying Nim because I'm teaching, but regardless, I'm just basically here. Son saying Nim. Son saying Nim. And the next is Timde Ben. Timde. And you're gonna be like, why does my my uh, like ch kind of look like that? And that's just how I write it. Um, same thing in English. Everything is just written however you want. I keep writing this so awkwardly, and I don't know what's going on. I'm out of practice. So Tim day bed. Actually, next is dip house. Dip. Dip. house and then we have ta which is car ta ta it's also t i don't know if that's lower or down maybe it's on a different yeah but it's also ta ta car yay and then saram this person and then we're also gonna do tech, which is book. Tech. Ah, keep pressing the buttons on my my writing utensil. Ta da. And tech. And then got some more words. Computer, which is one of those um, phonetics where it like just sounds English. Uh, computer. Not gonna be exactly the same. Computer. But 
it, it sort of translates over. If you heard computer, you, you would think computer. There you go. You now know a Korean word without doing much, <laughs> without much effort. <laughs> Let's uh, write that up here. I don't know why I'm second guessing myself on how to write this. Um. I don't know why it's right like that. We're just going to go with it. I really thought there was going to be another syllable, but. Computer. And next is na Namu. Free slash wood. Namu. So, like, my desk is made out of uh, Namu. What are you looking for? Oh, the camera. You have a tape measure? Yeah, I have a tape measure. I poked you. I know. Oh, where? Um, Want to kiss you? Want to stream that may be considered adult content. Okay. Awesome. Next word, namu, which is wood. So it's like a tree, so it can be referred to as a as tree or wood. You can just call it the same thing. Namu. Uh so pa sofa. Okay, I think everyone knows what sofa. Sofa is. So pa. I'm I keep like I don't know why I write it like the way I write this. It just makes sense to write it like this. I don't know. I'm just this here, sofa. Sofa. Um. Tungguk, Tungguk, China. Sofa. Tungguk, Tungguk, China. China, and we have Japan, Ilbon, Ilbon, Ilbon. A lot of this is just like repetition, just um. Two of the apps that they have on their website, at least, is the Anki app, which they get to pay for. And they used to have the uh, Memorize app. I actually don't even think they still have it. Um, yeah, they say they have a Memorize tool. Oh, it's still there. Yeah, so you can, they get all, of it's already all in here. So here you go. Very, very nice, easy. Um, Memorize is free to use. The Anki app, they like they do have you pay for it. But you can either choose to make your own Anki or I did Memorize for the longest time. Um, I'm probably I'm sure if I actually remember how to log into Memorize, I would have all their lessons in there so that's one way you can use or they have a vocabulary practice video this is one of those things where you have to to use or lose so you practice something um you wait a certain amount of time you practice again wait a certain amount of time longer practice again and eventually it just becomes part of your knowledge base and you just kind of know it just kind of like how like i know random words like i want to be a for no reason same concepts. Next is moon, which is door. Moon. What? I can't remember if we listened to Japan or not, so I'm just gonna play. Bon. We did. Bon. Moon. Bon. Moon. Moon. I don't know why it sounds like a B. <laughs> Let's 
Moving on. The gratis paste on this page. Ah. I wonder if I actually if I paste that. Huh. I don't know what I was thinking. Very cool. Okay. I wonder if I can erase it. Aha. So I need. I actually put everything in order this time. Last time like I was doing it weird. I've never done it before, so you know what? Still getting used to like using this. particular ah. da, 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 da. we're seeing some so much fun okay. it's calling me all right quick break ah quick break I, I apologize for that brief intermission. I was getting called, and they don't usually call me, and I was like, okay, this must be serious. No. They literally asked how much the cost of the ship was. And I was like... Okay. <laughs> Fine. Sure. <laughs> I'll give you this information. <laughs> uh, we're gonna just do a couple more of feeling. Okay, I'm going to make a couple more pages real quick. My keyboard is like all the way over there because I have like my tablet right here. So it's like reaching over everything. Okay, that'll be fine. All right, there's also a door. So that means we have five left. So we have we saw, which I was talking about earlier. We saw Doctor. Usa. 
Oh wait, that's right. I'm saying it wrong. Ooh, ooh, saw, ooh, saw, not ooh, ooh, saw. We could grab a sharpie. I had a pen on my desk, but the cats knocked it off. Back on track. Next is Haxing. Student? Haxing. Haxing. I said it right. <laughs> I'll take it. It's a win. Let's see. Haxing. Haxing. Students. And then we have Ita, Ne, and Ani, which are other Ita, Ida, Ida, Ne, ne. Ani. So Ita is A word you have to conjunctate. Most words, if it ends with da, you have to conjunctate it in the Korean language. Most. Um, they say all. It says any words that end in da must be conjunctated. We use. I can think. I can think of a few times where they don't do it, but I'm. That's the thing I've noticed. Um, but generally, if you see something that says oh ita, that's an adverb, or. A noun, not a noun, um, uh, adjective or verb, it's going to get conjunctionated again into that formality of, oh, is it informal, formal, what level formal? They'll go over it. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're going to write those down. Let's see, we have ita. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to say ita. There we go. To be ne is yes and ani, which is no. And and here's the first unit, which I think all units are like twenty five lessons. Yeah, they are. We're gonna learn. 1,050 vocabulary words in the first 25 lessons. So, yay! And it looks like you can download the, the package of files in this link. So, now that we've learned all the words, let's go back through the, the list just really quickly. We have Hangu, Doshi, Irun, Jo, Na, Namja, Yoja, I, which I'm saying that right. Changed it. Uza, which I'm sitting in. I'm sitting in a chair. Takta, which I desk, I don't know. Table. Sunseng nim. Jim de. Jim. Ah. Jim. Ta. Saram. I'm in person. Check. Computer, which I'm currently on. Uh, Nam. Soka. Jung. Uh. Jung. Jungu. I'm saying that wrong. Jungu. Jungu. China. Ilbon. Moon. Isa. Haxing. Ita. Ne and Ani. So, readings. We're gonna learn some more words apparently, which makes sense. It's like you want to learn these words when you first are learning Korean. So, throughout their lessons, I will use only grammar and vocabulary that you've learned from previous lessons. And Unit Zero taught you to write words in Korean. Above, you can see the first set of words you should study to get you started. I have not yet taught you how to use those words or conjunctate them. We're going to learn it. 
The words for hello, thank you, how are you, and please are actually quite difficult in Korean. There's actually grammar within the words themselves. At this stage, I would simply memorize these greeting words as one unit, and you can worry about the grammar within them later when it becomes relevant. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm um, going to write them down. So we're going to start with 안녕하세요, um, which... 안녕하세요, but a lot of times you can just say 안녕. Hi. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. And you can like pronounce every single word when you're first learning, like every single um, constant, like a um, pairing, like 안녕하세요 while you're learning. 안녕하세요. But half the time you just like, you just whip it out. You're just like, 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Anya, like you just kind of say it. So there you go. But we're gonna write it down because we're learning it. Let's see. Um. Ah. What? That's weird. Let's see. Anya. Ha. Se. Hello. Wonder if they can actually see. Hope we can see it. Oh, we have we have a viewer. <laughs> okay, the club doctor. I I am gaming. Any other day except for Tuesdays. Tuesdays are language learning. I'm sorry I, I did not inform you of that beforehand, but today is my language learning day. Um, you can see my schedule. I meant to actually, <laughs> I meant to do something this weekend, a game this weekend, and I just decided I didn't, um, which is my bad. <laughs> I should have, but our internet, our fiber line for our internet got like the winds like cut it, I mean, in half and we had to like, uh, we were at, we were down for internet for the weekend, so. That was a, a my bad, <laughs> but you can see my schedule. Um, I Tuesday through Friday I'll be on here. Um, Tuesdays are language learning, which you know if that's not if that's not your thing, you can uh, always tune in on another day. But thank you for stopping in. So. We're learning two forms of thank you, which is gamsa, uh, gamsa hada, and komata, komata, which are um, the unconjunctuated version of thank you. And then they, they have a couple of the ways to conjunctuate it. Which is uh Kamsahamida, which is the one you're gonna hear the most is Kamsahamida, uh very respectful, very formal. Um, and you're more likely to hear Gomawo um for the least formality. No, I know I know your gamer tag. I just I like to refer to people as their tags. I know it I know it's Tay. <laughs> Don't worry, and <laughs> I know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I just try to refer to people as their chat name. But I do appreciate you stopping in when you're literally at work. Go back to work. Anyway, so just because I know that information, I'm just going to write Gamsahamida and Gomomo. Or, yeah, I'll put Gomomo yo because it's like the middle form of. Um, formality, which we'll learn later. I just happen guilty knowledge. I already have it. Um, so let's write this. Slash. Go. 
Na? Wo? Wo? Jo. Und dann ist Thank you. And the next is How are you? Oh, wait, I guess I should actually play that. And now we're going to learn how to say how are you, which is Jar Juneseo. So I love this little tidbit. Although this is the most literal way of saying how are you in Korean, it's not as common as like saying how are you in English. Um, Korean people love food and a common way to greet someone is to ask if they've eaten, which I just find very cute. <laughs> I enjoy that. So yeah, so as an English speaker, we say, oh, how are you doing? But uh, in Korea, it's like, oh, have you eaten? Like, that's what they ask. But here's like the most literal form of saying how are you, which is char, uh, char, jineseo. I actually said that sort of correctly, so I'm proud of myself. So we're going to write this one down. Let's see. Ah, what am I doing? I'm writing it all weird. Char. G. Ne. Se. Ah, what am I doing? That's wrong. Yo. How are you? And then we have please, which is sebar. gonna do I'm gonna write it kind of off so my writing is all 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 over the place say bar please we're gonna go in the <laughs> it cut off the p it's the whole point of having this little box but I think I might have overestimate please here we go so that's kind of the learning for the day. So we just learned how to say hello, 안녕하세요, or 안녕, which is, you can say like very informally. Um, thank you, which is 잘세, um, 감사합니다, 고마워요. Um, how are you, which is very English phrase, very much more of an English way of saying things, which is jar jineseo and please, which is jebar. Now we move on to the, the meat and bones, the bread and bones. Am I using that right? What is that phrase? Honey, what is the phrase? Use his headphones on. Um, sentence word order. Which I remember the first time when I was learning this, I was like, what? But it's not, it's not bad, I promise. <laughs> so, the Korean has a sentence structure that is hard to initially grasp, which is uh, accurate, accurate statement. Um, so, Korean sentences, it's always the subject, object, verb, or subject, adjective. So, you just don't say, oh, I ate. I eat, a ha I eat hamburger, you say, I hamburger eat, which is weird to think about, like the first time you think about it, but don't worry, it makes sense later. So, let's see. Sentence. I need to sit better. 
turn this more. I like right sideways, so I'm like messing myself up. Sentence. Word. Order. I like writing things down. Writing things down helps me. So you would say, so it's sub subjects, objects. I don't know why I'm writing it all the way down. It's fine. And then Ooh. verb or sub, then adjective. There's a cat in coming. So And explain, we're going to explain what the subject object means as your ability to understand later concept depends on you understanding this. The subject refers to a, the subject refers to a person, thing, noun, whatever that is acting. The subject does the action of the verb. For example, hi, Dopey. Hello. Hi. He's on, oh, he's taken over. Want my pen? Thank you, you can't eat my pen. <laughs> so my tablet's currently taken over by a cat, so we'll just <laughs> follow along over here. So I went to the park. So they're, they're underlining each of the subjects. So I went to the park. I will go to the park. Can you stop eating my plants? He's in shed season. Just fur everywhere. Hi, Dopey. Hi, Luna. Luna's right here, too. Are you trying to steal this? Luna, can you please get all the way? You wanted that? Go get it. Luna's gonna beat you too. You better hurry. Okay. Yeah. Cat fur everywhere. Okay. My mom, he, the dog, the clouds. Those are the subjects. In in English, the subject always becomes before the verb. Um, the object refers to whatever the verb is acting on. For example, in these sentences, the object is me, the mailman, rice, Korean. So students studied Korean. Korean is the verb, is the object that the verb is acting on. And in English, the object always comes after the verb. However, a sentence with a verb does not require an object. For example, I slept, I ate, he died. Sometimes there is no object because it was simply been omitted for the sentence. For example, I ate or I ate rice are both correct sentences. Other verbs by their nature cannot act on an object. For example, you cannot place an object after the verb to sleep or to go. I sleep you, I go you. Subjects are also present in sentences with adjectives. However, there is no object in a sentence with an adjective. The subjects are outlined, underlined in the following adjective sentence below. So school, I, the movies, the building, my girlfriend, the food. Verbs and adjectives are placed at the end of a sentence. Actually, every Korean sentences and clause must end in one of the following. A verb, an adjective, or ita, which as we learned earlier, means to be. So like, Kind of a state, the state uh, to be. You're you're here. They go over like the meaning later in the lesson. It's neither a verb nor an adjective, but it behaves like them. Korean has also a formality system, which I was talking about earlier. Um, it's like built into the language. Is how the entire language operates is around this formality system. That is like. The way you speak to older people, the parent, like with high respects, would be different than how you speak to a friend, which I was talking about earlier. So I kind of already brushed up on that. I took their fender. It's okay. Um, which goes back to the na and jo, the formal and informal way of saying me or I. 
there are two different there there are many ways to conjunctuate a word as we saw above so um with the thank you uh the joma the jomada go, gomada my goodness where like the thank you over up here goma woyo where i said goma wo goma woyo goma sinida those are the different formalities of how you can conjunctionate a word to fit the formal how you're going to be talking um so they're going to explain the formalities later in lesson six I just happen to have guilty knowledge of it, so we'll move on. So, to make Korean sentences, when you're just starting off, they have this thing called particles. These particles dictate if it's a subject, if this like if the word that you that's in the sentence is a subject or an object. Um, there is no English equivalent for a particle. There is none. You're not going to find English equivalent. As try as you might, there isn't one. They are just a thing that Korean, like Korean, the Korean language has to distinguish between what's the subject of the sentence versus what's the object of the sentence, other than just where they're placed in the sentence. Because you can have really long sentences, run-on sentences, the same way English can have run-on run -on sentences. I just said one. It works like that. So they have these particles to help distinguish between those things. Let me... Just going to make a couple more. So I feel like I, I need a couple more. While I'm here. Okay. So these are just kind of the, the first ones that we're going to go over. We have nun or un and, um, for to dictate a subject. So jonun, uh, nanun, which they have here. Um, the difference between using nun and un is literally just does the last word before it end with a consonant. If it does, you're using un. If it doesn't, you're using nun. There you go. But let's write it down. So let's see, nun. Or in, which is subject. So, following what they have on the screen is nanun, donun, jibun, chain. Which again, we're just using the words that the exam um, vocabulary words that we're going to be using for this lesson. Next, we're learning the object, which is ru or u. I'm saying them wrong. Please don't. Please. They're not. I'm not saying it. So when you're using like the object of the sentence, it's it's the same thing where if it's ends with a consonant, you'll use u. And if it's a ends with a vowel, you'll use u. I'm messing it up. But same thing, just for the object. So I'll write that down as well. I hate writing these because, like, there's just so many lines. This is for objects. And they're teaching us these. So just use them for now when we're doing sentences. It just helps you learn the structure. It helps remind you where the object is supposed to go just because it's a little out of order in Korean than it is English. So now we're going to make some sentences. So we can now say, I speak Korean. Not well, but I do. <laughs> so you start with, when you're trying to say, I speak Korean, you have to change it into how they actually write it. So you're not going to say I speak Korean and Korean. You're going to say I Korean speak. Oh my math watch is going to die. It's okay. So once you have where it's supposed to go, 
and what you're supposed to say. You have I, Jo, or Na, Nun. Well, I guess they're just doing it this way. So I, Nun, Korean, Ul, speak. So I, Korean, speak. That's how you're going to change it. They don't actually write down the Korean equivalent, which is fine. I mean, we don't need to know the Korean equivalent. I like you would be, would change from I like you to I you like. So I noon, you, like. And we're again, we're attaching the particles which have no English equivalent, which is why they're in the sentences. Or I wrote a letter. I letter wrote. So I noon, letter u, wrote. I opened the door. I noon, so I door opened. So I noon, door u, opens. My mom will make pasta. My mom un, pasta u, will make. And it goes the same thing with adjectives. So my girlfriend is pretty. You can say my girlfriend un, is pretty. So now we're going to be focusing on using actual Korean words to create sentences ending in ita. So, a state. Like, to be. So, ita can be, I, it can be am, is, are, was, were. It changes based on, like, the context of the sentence, which you didn't have that like you don't have don't know that it's hard it takes so hard um let's see so in each of the sentences a different word is used depending on the subject and tense of the sentence i can't imagine how difficult this would be for an english learner in korea the ita is usually sent all of those so it it all is just ita so I am pretty. She is beautiful. They are hungry. We are smart. You don't have to say am, am is, are, are. Like, it's all just ita. Um, but, in, actually, sorry, I messed up. The structure of the sentence predicts an adjective is discussed. Predict predicated by adjective is discussed in lesson three so we're a little fast ahead so it's not for adjectives ita is not used but it, it's not used to say like i am pretty it looks like it's like not for adjectives but ita is used for like i am a man he is a man they are men i was a man they were men is used to indicate a noun is a noun. Okay, so it's like I, a noun is a noun. How substitu substitutive the words are for man and I, which are na and namta. So when you're saying I am a man, you would say nanun namna of nanun namta ita. So, but obviously we're not conjunctioning it yet because we haven't learned how to do it. Yet. Yeah. So we would say, Nanun nan, namza ita. I, I am a man. And they say, notice that ita is directly attached to the second noun. Verbs and adjectives are not attached to nouns like this, but ita is. So it, it's incorrect to have a space. So it's all just one word when you're saying a sentence like that. I got not write a single thing about that. Let me. Ah. Okay. I lost the internet connection. But uh, we're back. We're back. Uh, for the rest of it. We were just talking about either. Um, like the to be noun. It's so, like how you're like saying like like you physically like you like you are this person you are this thing um not being an adjective 
so like smart oh it's just my phone telling me i can manage my my twitch stream so sorry about that intermediate connection and we are going to finish this up so we did talk about Ita and the appropriate conjunction into a sentence so it's right up against the noun the object um, of the sentence um the focus of this lesson and two and three and four is to introduce you to simple korean sentence structure until you reach lesson five or six you will not be exposed to conjunctation conjunctation and honorifics of korean verbs adjectives and eat that these words are very rarely used without conjunction and honorifics so you wouldn't ever say nanun namza ida or i guess in my case nanun <laughs> Yoda ita. I am a woman. We wouldn't say ita. We would say isayo or isunda or ita. Uh, sorry. Isa. I. Iyo. I don't know. We'll get into that later. The conjunction, the conjunction of a sentence is really important, but it's also structured sentences, which is what we're learning now. Is we're learning this, how to put the sentence together. So here are some examples, like out loud examples of like uh, here, nanun yoja ita. Like I was saying. Nanun yoja ya. Jonun yoja eyo. So this is the conjunction version. So it'd be yoja ye. Or yoja eyo. That's how you conjunctate it to be formal. This is informal because we're using nanun. This is the informal. This is this more formal. Sonun yoja eyo. And then we have I am a teacher. Nanun ah. Sonseng nim eyo. I yo. Jonun sonseng nim eyo yo. Nanun sonseng nim eyo. Jonun sonseng nim eyo. And I am a person. Nanun saram ita, or that's the unconditional version. So, nanun saram ie, ia, or donun saram ieo. Nanun saram ia, donun saram ieo. Here we go. So, now that we learned that, now we're going to learn this, that. So, i, ku, jo. The words this, that are often used as subjects of these types of sentences. So, this person, this chair, this car, um, and they're actually going to go into difference between who and so, which I'm in desperate need of because I don't remember for being honest. But that's the whole point of learning is we can learn it together. So let's learn this that. Let me write this down. So as you can see from calendar above that the third for this is e. We use e in Korean when we're talking about something that is within touching distance. E. I don't know what pen is. This pen. The one I am holding. This one. Just like in English, e is placed before the noun it is describing. For example, e saram, this person. E namza, this man. E yoza, this woman. E ta. This car, e takta, this table. Well, I guess time with this, e uza. Yep, this chair. Unfortunately, there are two words for that, which is ku and zo, which they are right. I don't know the difference. We use ku when we're talking about something from a previous sentence or from previous context, regardless of you, if you could see it or not. Providing examples would be too difficult because we don't know any Korean sentences. Um, however, I would say, I don't like that man. When your friend mentions him in a previous sentence, you would use ku. We use jo when we're talking about something that we can see but cannot touch because it's too far away. So, okay, that makes sense. So ku is if it was pre previously brought up. Oh, that, that thing that you brought up, that thing that was mentioned versus, oh, that thing way over there, jo. Jo, ku, previous mentioned, jo. 
Okay. I'm understanding. We're here. We're here now. So, i saram, ku saram, zo saram. So this person, that person, and that person. Which this person right here, say my stuffed animal. This person versus the person that we just talked about versus the person way over there, way over there, way off in the distance. Okay. So, even though it's translated the same, you don't use it the same way. Um, kind of like, I'm trying to think of a, an English alternative. Read and read. There you go. Said different. It's a different context. Oh, I read the sentence. I read the sentence, kind of, not the same thing at all. Uh, I'm done. One of the most common words in Korean is quote, meaning thing. When e, ku, jo are placed before kot, it is resulting in a compound word. Therefore, when placing kot after e, ku, and jo, there should not be a space between the two. In other words, the following words are in and within themselves and not two separate words. So, E cult, clu, clu cult, so cult. We see the same phenomenon happen with other words that you learn in future lessons. You don't need to worry about this now. I'll move on. Let's see. With these words, the word thing isn't necessary in the English translation. Let me explain. I use that as an example, but the same thing can be applied to the word this. That can be placed before a noun to describe it, as we saw earlier. However, it can be a net, also be a noun in and of itself. So, like, I like that. We say that all the time. I like that. I like this. So, it is a thing. It is that. Um, so, if in both English and Korean, that can be a determiner as an I like that man. It can also be a pronoun as I like that. When used as a determiner in English, you should place ku before a noun. When we use a pronoun in Korean, the word ku kot is used. So like, I like that man, you would just use ku and then namta. Versus I like that, you would use uh, ku kot. Um, no, no, what is it? Matao. Matao. In the same respect, i, ku, zo translate to this, that, and that, respectively, and are placed before nouns to indicate this noun, that noun, that noun. i, ku, i, ku, 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 zo, ku are nouns, pronouns. Therefore, they do not need to be followed by a redundant word thing, although their meaning could be the exact same thing. I like this. I like this thing. You would just say, if you're saying I like this, I like that. You would just add cult after e or ku or cho. So using this that with ita is very interesting. Remember ita translates to be and conjunction as like I am, is, are. Um, now that we know how to use e, ku, and cho, we can now make sentences like that person is a doctor. That person, nun, doctor is, because we have to put it in the way the Korean structure works, which again is subject, object, verb, or subject, adjective, which I'll move up. And then changing the English words to be the appropriate Korean words. So when we say that person is a doctor, we would change it to that person, doctor is, to put it in the correct way. That the Korean sentence would be structured, and we would just replace. So that person, ku, saram, un, because this this person we don't know who that person is. I don't see them, so we would use ku. Um. So ku saram, and then we have to add the particle un, because it's a subject particle, and it ends of the consonant, and we have to add uisa, because that's doctor. And then ita, because that person is a doctor. 
So the sentence without conjunctioning it would turn into ku saram un saram un usa ita usa ita, which after conjunctioning it, which they have just conjunctioned. Ku saram un usa ya. Ku saram un usa e yo. So that's the actual when you put formality and you conjunction it, which we're not going to go over yet. We'll learn it eventually. And we can do that. There are over, tw there are 1,250 example sentences in Unis 1. And you can download all the files in one package. I wonder if you have to pay for it. Yeah, I think you have to pay for all these. But I I honestly I love this support support things that you appreciate, which I think I'm going to. Let me go back. Go which square? Wow, that was an extremely difficult lesson. If you were to pick up another Korean textbook, I'm sure the first chapter would be much easier than this. Trust me though, learning this at the start will be very useful to you later on. When I was learning how to speak Korean, it took me months to realize some of these things, not because they were hard, but because when I was using a textbook, they never taught me the reason why things are the way they are in Korean. Before you un move on, make sure you understand the simple Korean sentence structure presented in the first lesson. Also remember that sentence not in parentheses, are technically incorrect or very very uncommon because they are not being conjunctionated so like they mean like not conjunction ita. so we learned lots of things today let's go back through all of it so the words that we need to learn that over the next course of the week that we need to practice on are hanguk korea doshi city Irum, name, jo, me, formally, na, i, me, I, <laughs> informally, namja, man, yoza, woman, i, this, this thing, ku, that thing that we previously mentioned or isn't physically in front of us, jo, that thing very far away, or that very far away, ko, which is the thing, so if we're saying this thing, we would say ikot. If we're saying, oh, that thing that we just brought up previously, kukot, or that thing really far away is chokot. We have uza, which is chair, takta, which is table, sonsingnim, which is teacher, timde, bed, dib, house, cha, car, saram, person, tech. Computer, which is computer. Nam, namu, which is tree or wood. Sofa, which is sofa. Jungkook, China. Ilbon, Japan. Moon, door. Usa, doctor. Haksing, student. Ita, to be. Ne, yes. An, ani, no. Annyeonghaseyo, hello. 감사합니다. Or, 고마워요. Thank you. 잘 지내세요. How are you? And 제발, please. We learned that the way subject Korean, um, I'm sorry, Korean sentences are set up are subject, object, verb, or subject, adjective. So you would say, instead of saying, oh, I am a man. Oh, I'm sorry. Instead of saying, like, that person is a doctor, it's up on the screen, uh, that person is a doctor, you would change it to that person doctor is. That's just how their sentence structures are set up. And then we learned about some particles, which is nun and un for subject particles, or ru and ur for object particles, which depends on if there's a consonant at the end or not. If it's a consonant or vowel at the end, we decide which... Um, particle we're going to use. There is no English equivalent for these particles. And we learned ita in depth, 
of how Ita works. It doesn't work when you're saying, oh, I'm pretty. We don't use Ita. It's like, I am this thing. Like, I am a woman. So, nanin yoza Ita. I am a woman. That's not conjunctionated, but that's fine. We're just learning, so it's okay. And we learned more in depth, um, again, of i, ku, jo, and i, ko, ku, jo, ku, ku, ko, and jo, ko, of this thing, that thing. So I like that. I like that. You would say, ku, ko. Or I guess if it's a, the guy. I like this. I like this object. You would use equal this thing. And that's basically what we learned today in lesson one. Thank you so much for uh, sticking around. And I know that I had a bit of a blip because my internet cut out. And uh, thank you. And you guys have a wonderful week. Um, you can stick around. I have a usually game the rest of the week. And I will be back with another language learning stream next Tuesday. And we're going to go right into lesson two after we brush up on the things that we learned previously. Alrighty. Bye.